गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स स्टूडेंट्स वी आर स्टार्टिंग विथ आर लेसन नंबर सेवन लेंसेस फ्रॉम साइंस पार्ट वन राइट यस सो इन आर टूडेज वीडियो वी शैल बी लर्निंग अपेरेंट साइज ऑफ एन ऑब्जेक्ट यूजेज ऑफ कॉन्केव एंड कॉन्वेक्स लेंसेज एंड परसिस्टेंस ऑफ विजन ओके सो children let's begin let us start with apparent size of an object consider two objects pq and p1 q1 having same size but kept at different distances from an eye the object pq will appear to be of greater size than the object p1 q1 as the angle subtended by the object pq at the eye is greater than the angle subtended by the object p1 q1 at the eye thus the apparent size of an object depends on the angle subtended by the object at the eye now if the object is nearer to the eye the angle is greater and it is observed size is also greater in order to see the object distinctly we bring the object nearer to the eye however if the object is brought within the distance of the distinct vision we cannot see it clearly due to the strain on the eye even though it subtend a large angle at the eye in short an object can be clearly seen in its most magnified form when it is at the distance of distinct vision from the eye got the children now let's learn uses of concave lenses now instruments like scanner cd player and some medical equipments use laser light for proper working of these equipments concave lenses are used the peep hole in the door This is a small safety device which helps us to see a large area outside the door. So this uses one or more concave lenses. Understood children? The peep hole uses one or more concave lenses. Concave lenses are used in spectacles to correct the eye defect called myopia or near sightedness concave lens is used to spread widely the light produced by a small bulb inside a torch instruments like camera telescope and microscope mainly uses convex lenses to get good quality image a concave lens is used in front of the eyepiece or inside it so this now let us study about the uses of convex lenses okay uses of convex lenses convex lenses are used in spectacles to correct the defect of vision called hypermetropia convex lenses are used in the instruments like camera projector spectrometer convex lenses are also used in simple microscope compound microscope and t 
telescope. So there are various instruments where convex lenses are used. So we are going to learn some of those instruments. So firstly we shall study about simple microscope. A simple microscope. When the object is placed within the focal length of a convex lens, the lens produces a virtual, erect and magnified image on the same side as that of the object. Are you getting me children? Good. A convex lens with a small focal length produces a virtual, erect and bigger image of a small size object when an object is placed within the focus of the lens. So such a lens is called a simple microscope or magnifying lens. One can get a 20 times larger image of an object using such microscope. Now children, suppose you are given two convex lenses. One having the focal length of 5 cm and another having a focal length of 40 cm. Then which lens will you use as a magnifying lens? Think about it. Yes, the lens with focal length of 5 cm should be used as a magnifying lens. These lenses are used by a watch watchmaker who repairs the watches. Okay, he can see the minute objects while repairing the watch. And also by the jewelers in testing the precious gems and finding out the flaws in it and their defects as well. So, a simple microscope is used by a watch repair and a jeweler. So these were the uses. Now the second is compound microscope. Simple microscope is used to observe small sized object. However, minute objects like blood cells, cells of plants and animals and minute living organisms like bacteria cannot be magnified sufficiently by using a simple microscope. Compound microscope are used. A compound microscope is made up of two lenses, an objective and an eyepiece. The objective has a smaller cross section and smaller focal length. The eyepiece has a bigger cross section. Its focal length is also larger than that of the objective. The lens are fitted inside a metallic tube in such a way that the distance between them can be changed. The axis of both the lenses are along the same line. As shown in the figure, the magnification occurs in two stages. The image formed by the first lens acts as an object for the second lens. Higher the magnification can be obtained by the combined effect of two lenses. The third one is telescope. Telescope is used to see distance objects clearly in their magnified form. The telescope used to observe astronomical sources like stars and planets are called astronomical telescopes. These telescopes are of two types. 
refracting telescope and reflecting telescope refracting telescope here lenses are used and in a reflecting telescope a combination of mirrors and lenses are used in both of these the image formed by the objective acts as object for the eyepiece which forms a final image objective lens has large diameter and a larger focal length because of which maximum amount of light coming from the distant object can be collected on the other hand the size of the eyepiece is smaller and its focal length is also less both the lenses are fitted inside a metallic tube in such a way that the distance between them can be changed the principal axis of both the lenses are along the same straight line generally by using the same objective but different eyepieces different magnification can be obtained so understood children these were the uses of convex lenses in the three types of microscope now let's study persistence of vision for this let us perform an activity children take a burning incense stick in your hand and start rotating it fast along a circle so what do we observe here hmm yes we observe a complete circle of red light isn't it yes we observe now let's do a second experiment draw a cage on one side of a cardboard now on the other hand on the other side of that cardboard draw a bird now make a hole on both the sides of that cardboard and tie a thread and hang the cardboard with the help of the thread now twist the thread and leave it so what do you observe here what do we observe children yes correct when the rotation are sufficiently fast the parrot is seen in the cage a single picture of parrot in a cage is seen so do you know children the reason behind the observation of these two activities come let us study this we can see an object because the eye lens creates its image on the retina the image is on the retina as long as the object is front of us the image disappears as soon as the object is taken away the impression of the image on the retina lasts for about 1/16th of a second after the removal of the object isn't it amazing so this is called the persistence of vision due to the persistence of vision there is an illusion of seeing the circle of light and of a single picture of the parrot in the cage motion pictures and televisions also 
work on the principle of persistence of vision. In motion pictures, photographs of moving objects are taken at the interval of the less than one tenth of a second and projected on a screen at the same rate. Each picture is slightly different from the other. So if this sequence of still pictures taken by a movie camera is projected on the screen at the same rate, then the successive images cannot be distinguished as separate images and get blended into one another. Due to the persistence of vision, we get the impression of observing the objects in continuous motion. Are you getting me children? So this is how it works. So children now let us learn perception of color. The retina of the human eye is made up of many light sensitive cells. These cells are shaped like a rod and like a cone. The rod like cells respond to the intensity of light and give information about the degree of brightness and dimness of the object to the brain. The conical cells respond to the color and give information about the colors of the object to the brain. Then brain processes all the information received and we see the actual image of the object. Rod-like cells respond to faint light also but conical cells do not. Thus, we perceive colors only in bright light. The conical cells can respond differently to red, green and blue colors. When red color falls on the eyes, the cell responding to red light gets excited more than those responding to the other colors and we get the sensation of red color. Some people lack conical cells responding to certain colors. These persons cannot recognize those colors or cannot distinguish between different colors. So these persons are said to be color blind. Normal eyesight except for the inability to recognize different colors. So children, have you all understood today's topic? Okay, with this we have come to an end of our lesson number 7, Lenses. Children, please watch the video attentively and then read the lesson. We shall see you in our next video with a new lesson. Till then, thank you students.